Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be probably uh, those that have listened for a while. Uh, some of it is going to be a repeat, but... Uh, Well, let's get going. Basically, it's going to be on the wilderness. So let's start at the beginning. All right, the beginning, Genesis chapter 2. You know, the first four letters of Genesis is where they get the word gene from, as in genetics, uh, DNA, RNA. Oh, yeah. Do you know, well, let's read Genesis 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden, garden, eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Okay. A garden. Let's skip to verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, you might have a small garden in a city, but generally gardens are more wilderness. Now, a lot of people don't know it yet. But the wilderness is going to be the future home of the true church, the remnant church. The um, Jerusalem, for the most part, was uh, even Jerusalem, what God called the holy city, became polluted, which is why the Lord allowed Babylon the king Nebuchadnezzar to come and take it captive. I mean, he came, besieged it, uh, killed a bunch of people, took the rest captive, and uh, burned it, burned it. I mean, you know, uh, and the Lord allowed it to happen. Yeah. But the thing is, if you want to know the future, Look to the past. So God wanted us to live in the garden, to keep it and to dress it. Of course, he wanted us to know about the tree of life and stay away from the tree of good and evil. But uh, that's another story that I've already done. So let's keep going. Now, almost all the time the Bible talks about cities, it's not good. I mean, let's face it. Bad news. Well, let's see. Where is the first time the word city appears in the Bible? Um, some people call it the law of first mention. And this only works in the King James Bible. The modern Bibles destroy this uh, I don't know what you would call it, but uh, usually the first time a word or phrase appears in the King James, you read the context and it gives you an idea of what the word or phrase refers to from then forward for the rest of the Bible. But uh, like I say, the law of, I mean, the uh, first mention the modern Bibles change the words so that you don't make the connections, the word associations. So that's that in and of itself is a reason to stay away from these modern Bibles. But city, where's the first time uh, the word city appears? Well, Genesis 4.17. Who's it associated with? Cain. 
In John chapter 8, around verse 45, Jesus called uh, a certain group of people of murderers from the beginning. And who was the murderer from the beginning? Cain. In Genesis 4.17, it says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he builded a city. Cain builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Now, there were two Enochs in the Bible. There was Cain's Enoch, and there was Seth's uh, lineage of Enoch. One was taken to heaven, the other was probably taken to the other place, if you catch my drift. It was a little bit south of heaven, yeah. Um, so, city associated with Cain. Uh, do you get the connection? I do. Cities are bad news. All right, in Genesis chapter 10, after the flood, um, you have people, uh, you got Shem, which is the chosen seed line. You have Japheth, which is uh, allowed to be accepted into uh, Seth's line after a certain period of time. And then you got Ham. And the children of Ham are never, to my knowledge, never spoken of nicely in the Bible. If you know what happened in Genesis 6 that caused the flood, well, personally, I think Ham was involved in all that mess after. But uh, that is well beyond the scope of this study. One of the sons of Ham was Canaan, the Canaanites. And uh, God told Israel to go into the land of Canaan and exterminate them all. He didn't say, preach the gospel to them, teach them the laws of Moses. No. He said, kill them all. And because people don't understand why... A lot of people say that, well, this God is a homicidal maniac. Well, when you understand what happened in Genesis 6, uh, between the fallen angels and the women, it makes sense. And if you don't think the sons of God are fallen angels, I suggest you read Job chapter 38, where they shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Adam didn't exist till six days later. And you can take a look at the first three chapters of Genesis, and nowhere does it say God created angels on this day. No. Personally, uh, well, you could argue the host of heaven, uh, you know, possibly. But the thing is, personally, I think the fallen angels, I mean, the, the angels, all of them, existed prior to the earth. They had to have. Otherwise, they couldn't shout for joy in Job 38. So these fallen angels did some dirty deeds, and I got an entire playlist on it for as long as I'm up on tube. But uh, they did the dirty deed. And I believe Ham was probably married to one. I don't know. All I know is the Canaanites were bad news. Uh, Cush was one of the sons of Ham. And in Genesis 10, uh, let's see. All right, let's read Genesis 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim and Put and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Sheba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Ramah, and Sabteca, Teca, and the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. 
Uh, there's all kinds of nasty legends about Nimrod, and they're not good. Uh, but they're not biblical, so I don't pay a lot of attention to it. So, verse 9. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter, hunter before the Lord. Uh, some say he was a mighty hunter of men's souls to take them to hell. I wouldn't argue that, but uh, I don't know. There's just not that much in there. Um, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, or Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kenna in the land of Shinar. All right, so here it is. One of Ham's line built Babel. You know the story about the Tower of Babel? Babel? Oh, yeah. Not good. All right, let's go to verse, uh, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 11 of Genesis. Verse 1, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Personally, I think it was Hebrew. Uh, but my opinion is, you know, just my opinion. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. Well, what was in Shinar? Uh, there was a city in Shinar called Babylon. Babel, Babel, Babylon. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, Babel uh, means confusion. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime, had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city. Let us build us a city. Oh yeah, a city. And a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Oh yeah, let's build us a stairway to heaven, people. Um, have you ever noticed all these uh, pyramids? I mean, all over the world. What do you think these people were doing? Building their stairways to heaven. I mean, there's pyramids all over the world. The biggest one in the world, from what I understand, is in China, in the desert. And it was only recently discovered less than 100 years ago. Uh, there's all kinds of pyramids in South and Latin America. Central America, Mexico. Uh, they even got some dirt mounds in Illinois that are pyramids. And they're huge. They're like over 10 acres large. Yeah. I mean, they're all over the world. Uh, were they worshiping the one true God? No. They were worshiping the other guy. The one that got booted out of heaven with a third of his angels. Yeah. Let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the city and the, and, and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Wherefore is the name of it called Babel, or Babel? Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. I'm getting the feeling that the Lord doesn't like cities. What do you think? Uh, in Genesis 10 and verse 19, and the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest, 
unto Sodom and Gomorrah and Adma and Zeboam, even unto Lasha. So the Canaanites were tied in with Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, keep that in mind. You know, uh, the Lord didn't have very nice things to say about the Canaanites. No. All right, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 13. We just read Genesis 10, 19. So now we're going to go to Genesis 13. Uh, you know what? The numbers in scriptures, uh, in the scriptures, have a lot of times very plain meanings. Uh, oftentimes, 13 is a bad number. Yeah. There's good numbers in the Bible, and then there's bad numbers in the Bible. 13 is one of them. So let's read Genesis 13, starting in verse 1. And Abram, now remember, Abram's name was changed by the Lord himself to Abraham, father of many nations. And uh, your demon nominational preacher wants you to think that uh, those antichrists over in the Middle East are all there is of Abraham. There's only one little nation, and it was created by the UN, or the United Nations, which is confusion, by the way. Uh, and they'll tell you, well, you know, they're, that's Abraham. Well, where's all these many nations of Abraham? Where are they? I can't find them. Well, I know where they are, but uh, your demon nominational preacher doesn't, but I do. Genesis 13 and verse 1, And Abram went up out of Egypt. Now remember, Egypt back in the days, and still is because of the Nile River, uh, was the breadbasket of the Middle East. That's one of the reasons why, well, there, there was a time when Egypt was a major power. Uh, in history. Perhaps you've heard of Anthony and Cleopatra. Anthony was a Roman uh, general. Cleopatra was a princess of Egypt. Uh, you know, when you can grow lots of food, you can support lots of children. And when you have lots of children, you got a large army. But before that happened, um, you know, Egypt was the breadbasket of the Middle East. So that helped them become uh, wealthy and powerful. But if you don't have the blessings of the Lord, you're in big trouble. And they didn't. The uh, Lord doesn't say anything good about Egypt that I can find in the Bible. Nothing. So, and Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel. Uh, E-L is a contraction for a name of God, and Beth means house. So Bethel basically means house of God. Even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar where he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them. Uh, so basically, there's too many, there's too much cattle for the land. Just too much, you know. You got too many, too much cattle. To, the grass can't grow fast enough. There's just so many of them. So Lot and Abram are both, you know, have cattle. Um, all right. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. 
And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. So, you know, Abram's servants and Lot's servants are fighting over the land. You know, hey, this is this green spot is for my cattle. No, no, we were here first, you know. So, you know. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwell dwelled there in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. You know? Sounds like Abram's a pretty good guy here. Just remember something. Abram, Abraham was called the friend of God. How's that for a uh, testimony, all right? So Abram says, Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. But if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. So if you go left, I'm going to go right. If you go right, I'll go left. I'm going to let you pick the spot that you want. I mean, how's that for, you know. And Lot lifted up his eyes and behold, all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh yeah, the cities, right? even as the garden of the Lord. Wow. So here it is, this land area that Lot's looking at is well watered. You know, it's obviously not a desert. And uh, it's like the garden of God. Eden was the garden of God, right? Yeah. So Lot is like checking it out going hmm yeah i think i'm gonna go this way even as the garden of the lord like the land of egypt as thou comest unto zoar now remember egypt because of the nile river uh the nile would flood every year they would make canals and dikes and uh no i'm not talking about lesbians no but uh, to hold the water in when it flooded. You know, they'd flood the fields and then uh, trap the water so that, you know, when it was time, when it was more dry, they'd, be, they'd have water for the crops. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. Oh boy, here it comes. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Oh yeah. You know, I have people say that... Uh, the men of Sodom were not really performing sodomy uh there's a thing now where they say well you know they were just unhospitable to uh strangers and that's why the lord destroyed them well if you know the rest of the story um two well actually three angels came to see the uh, abram and two of them went to go see lot because they were, you know, Lord was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of their wickedness. But Lot was there. So Abraham said, Lord, will you destroy the city for, you know, a hundred righteous people? And he says, no, I won't. How about 90? No, I won't. Uh, how about 80? No. 70? No. 80? Uh, 60? No. 50? No. 30, you know, and it gets down to the point where, you know, I, I think it was down to 10. Uh, okay, I was wrong. Well, I was off a little bit. Genesis chapter 18. And uh, let's see.
Verse 20. Now, the Lord with his two angels comes down to see Abraham. Genesis 18, 20. And the Lord said, Be because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Well, yeah. And they'll tell you it's not sodomy. They'll tell you, well, it's because they were unhospitable to strangers. Well, when the two strange, when the two angels went to see Lot, what did the men of the city want to do? They wanted, um, what do they call it? Fresh meat, you know? Yeah, they wanted to rape them. Yeah, that's not being very hospitable to strangers, wanting to sodomize uh, your, you know, strangers. Yeah. So I guess in a way they're right. It uh, it wasn't very. They weren't hospitable to uh, strangers. So, and the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, because their sin is very grievous. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? You know, people, this is very, very important. Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Oh, I was off. I thought it was 100, but no, it's 50. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? You know, people, if you got 50 righteous people praying in a wicked city, the Lord will spare that place. Think about it. Can you imagine New York City? What is it? Eight, eight, nine million people, something like that. Seven, eight, nine million living in that little tiny cesspool. Wilt thou also destroy not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Ah! And Abram answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure, there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake yet again unto him yet again and said, Peradventure, there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak peradventure. There shall 30 be found there. And he says, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Oh, we're getting dirty, down and dirty here. And he said, uh, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, there shall be 20 found there. And he says, I will not destroy it for 20's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak yet, but this once. This is the last time, okay? Peradventure 10 shall be found there. And he says, I will not destroy it for 10's sake. Ooh. And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abram, Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. People, if there's not 10 righteous, blood-bought, spirit-filled, righteous people in a city... Look out. And let me tell you something. The wicked are going to drive the righteous people away from the cities. It's going to happen. It's happening now. 
All the decent people are leaving California in droves. Why is that? Because they don't want all the evil being taught to their children in the public schools. That's why. I was going to say something, but I can't because uh, the uh, you-know-whos, yeah. But, uh, yeah, story time for your kindergarten kids and your elementary school kids. What are they teaching them? Filth. Filth. All right, well, the rest of the story is the two angels go to Sodom. They meet Lot. And the men of the city try to want to rape them. And the angels strike them with blindness because guess what? They were physically blind, but they were spiritually blind. And what happens? The angels say, get your butt in gear and get out of here. Well, that's the Bob paraphrase version, but uh, that's basically what he's saying. So they basically have to grab Lot by the hand and drag him out. And let me tell you something. I bet you Lot was uh, fairly well, well, maybe not wealthy, wealthy, but I bet you he was well off because he had flocks and herds. But guess what? When he fled the city, what did he have? He had his wife and his two kids and whatever he could carry on his back. And his wife looked back and the Lord turned her into a pillar of salt. Boy, I'll tell you what. That's going to happen to a lot of believers when they, you get forced out of the cities. Because you know what happens when the righteous tolerate evil? The evil will spread. And the evil that spreads eventually, when it becomes overwhelming, the evil will not tolerate the church. It won't happen. They will either kill you or they will drive you out. You will have to leave. Flee for your lives. All right, let's read Genesis 19. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. All right, so it's evening time, right? And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed, which means they surrounded, compassed the house round about, uh, round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Uh, well, when a man knows a woman and she conceives, well, yeah, you kind of get the, uh, the idea. Yeah, yeah, we want to know them. Uh, sexually. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. You know... God forbid we offer our virgin daughters to a bunch of sodomites. God forbid. I think I would let them know what buckshot is. 12 gauge. 
But uh, nowadays, uh, you know, the whole police department's in on the deal. So what can I tell you? And the judges, and especially the attorneys, the lawyers. Yeah. So, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he will needs to be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they, the angels, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Oh, yeah. And the men said unto Lot, Well, these are the angels. Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. You know, people, I've had so-called pastors, um, I call them deceivers, actually told me, oh, don't read that Old Testament. That's for the you-know-whos. That's not for us. We're New Testament Christians. Of course, they don't read the New Testament either. They don't read the Old and they don't read the New either. You know, just listen to the pastor. He's, he'll tell you what you should believe. But God's telling you here, when there's not 10 righteous in a city, look out. When New York City does not have 10 righteous people in the city, don't be surprised when the Lord rains down fire upon it. Maybe a nuke. I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. They would deserve it. Did you know that New York City is 25%? populated by the you-know-whos, 25% of New York City is our Antichrist. Um, I mean, what does that tell you? Wall Street. Yeah. All right. In New York City proper, the five boroughs, about 8.3 million in the New York City metropolitan area, which, you know, includes part of New Jersey and what have you, uh, supposedly there's 18 million people. Do you know that that's like 5% of the entire United States' population in a little tiny area? Yeah. When you don't have 10 righteous people in New York City, look out. I mean, you know... The book of Genesis and all this stuff is not in the Bible just to, you know, fill up space on a on a page. So, and when a couple of angels come to you and say, hey, uh, you better get out of here because we're going to destroy this place. Uh, don't be lollygagging around and saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to miss my microwave oven and my refrigerator and my air conditioning. Oh, I'm gonna miss all that. You know, the, the, the wait a minute, can you wait? Cause the, the five o'clock nightly news is coming on my uh, flat screen plasma TV. Yeah, with high def. Oh yeah, I love that high def. And what about my 5G phone? My, my Apple smart and my smartphone. Oh. Let's skip down to uh, let's see Genesis nineteen. Let's go. Verse fourteen. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters. So evidently he had more than the two virgin daughters. Uh, so he had at least two daughters that were married. And he said, up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. 
but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. In other words, this guy sounds crazy. You know, what have you been drinking all night? You know? And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, oh yeah, he's waiting around. The men laid hold upon his hand. They grabbed him by the hand and dragged him out. The men laid upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. So evidently, uh, looks like <laughs> the angel grabbed Lot in one hand, his wife in the other hand, and the other angel grabbed one daughter in one hand, and the other daughter in the other hand, and dragged them out. Uh, you ever heard that expression, wild horses couldn't drag me away? Oh yeah, well, maybe not horses, but how about the angels? And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto them. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. You know, people, this is going to happen again. Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Lest thou be consumed. Escape to the mountain. Get out of here. That's what's going to happen. Verse 24, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Do you know what brimstone is? Burning sulfur. Guess what one of the components of gunpowder is? Sulfur, charcoal, and... Uh, uh, what they call um, saltpeter. Yeah, that's what they made gunpowder out of. Sulfur. Burning sulfur. Brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. You see, the Lord destroyed the world in a flood. The next time, guess what? It's going to be burned with fire fire big time so you know there may not be flood again on the earth but there's going to be fire revelation 8 and verse 7 and the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burnt up and all green grass was burnt up well, guess what? This is one of the plagues, just like they had in Egypt at the first Passover. Yeah. Hail with fire. So, you know, uh, I get people say, oh, well, I just, I don't understand the book of Revelation. Well, read the rest of the Bible. Read the book of Gen uh, Genesis. Read the book of Exodus. A lot of symbolism in there. A lot. What God did in the past, he'll do in the future. So, how about 2 Peter? Let's see. Verse 6. Chapter 3 and verse 6. 2 Peter 3, 6. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. 
But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. You know, and then you hear these idiots say, well, you know, the Bible says this is going to shortly come to pass. Well, it's been a couple thousand years. That doesn't sound like shortly coming to pass, does it? They're mockers. Well, guess what? That's from the perspective of the Lord. Shortly coming to pass is a day or two. You know, a couple thousand years to us is like a day or two to the Lord. You know? You got some kids and uh, it's, you know, and uh, it's Thursday and you're saying, oh, I'll take you to the zoo on Saturday. You know, I'll take you there in two days. You know, that's shortly coming to pass. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes, even the Lord wants the wicked to repent. I'm I bet you he would love to hear even the fallen angels repent, but that ain't gonna happen. I don't think so. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Fire, people. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. The wicked are going to be burned up. And the cities are going to be burned up. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Let's read Revelation chapter 18. Uh, you know, this is going to be the judgment of Babylon. And a lot of people argue over, oh, well, what's Babylon? I've heard America, New York City, Mecca, uh, Rome, uh, Istanbul, Turkey, Moscow, Russia, Seattle, Washington. I mean, really? Everywhere but where it is. Revelation 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Why twice? Well, there was a spiritual, I mean, I'm sorry, there was a physical Babylon, which was destroyed. And then there's a spiritual Babylon, which will be destroyed. And oh, by the way, people, um, I uh, when YouTube do, boots me off the air, I can be found on archive.org and, excuse me, World Truth Videos. Uh, World Truth Videos is having a hard time. I think they're having a, what they call denial of service attacks. Yeah. Uh, that's where they'll take thousands of computers and try to all watch different things. And it just over, over taxes their, uh, their computer systems. And, uh, I've been trying to load stuff. I don't think it's their fault. I think it's, uh, the fault of all the enemies that will, uh, 
are trying to destroy the information from being seen. Uh, I'm not crazy about World Truth videos because they got a lot of things about Hitler, and I'm no fan of Hitler, trust me. Honestly, I think Hitler was one of them because uh, if he'd advanced on Dunkirk, the war would have been over with England. They'd have had no army to fight with. So, instead, a lot of German people died, but the Lord allowed it. So, um, and like I said, you want to download all my stuff, well, up to now, um, I've got a download link, so... And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit. What kind of spirits? Devils! Demonic spirits! And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations, not some of them, not most of them, not many of them, all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. That's right. Come out of her, my people. Get out of Dodge. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. That's right. Get out of Sodom. Get out of Gomorrah before God rains down fire and brimstone. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Flee to the mountains. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. You know, if you listen to the pre-trib rapture crowd, they'll say, well, you know, this is for the people that are left behind. What? I mean, really, you're going to tell me that God writes entire chapters and books for people that don't, don't believe at the present time? No, the Bible's written to believers, not unbelievers for the future. No. Verse 5, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen." Ah, a queen. What about a queen? Hmm. So, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. You know, uh, what is this queen? Well, guess what? In the Old Testament, you had the Queen of Heaven. She has many, many names. Why, the Catholic Church will tell you her name's Mary. Oh yeah, the Mother of Jesus. She's the Queen of Heaven. Pray to Mary. Where's that in the Bible? It's not. Uh, but you don't, you know, they don't generally believe the Bible. They believe whatever the Pope tells them. Which, if you want to believe the Pope over the Bible, that's fine with me. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. All I can do is warn you. The Queen of Heaven has many, many names. Many names. Uh, one of her names is Columbia. Yeah, that little country down South America. Who named Columbia, Columbia? Not me. Probably not the people that live there. Um, 
What about uh, Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia? What's the name of the Statue of Liberty? Columbia. Oh, yeah. Um, have you ever heard of Easter? Oh, yeah. That's what they tell us. That's the day uh, Easter Sunday. That's when Jesus rose from the dead, right? Uh, do you know that Easter is, if you get a really, really good dictionary, it'll tell you that's the name of the spring goddess, goddess, the spring goddess of fertility. Why do you think they got bunny rabbits and Easter eggs? Yeah. Uh, the goddess was also called Diana, Ishtar, Isis. Uh, she's got tons and tons of names. Uh, have you ever heard of the Shekinah? S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H. Oh, yeah, you got all these churches now going, Oh, the Shekinah, the glory of God. Oh, they're talking about the goddess. They're not talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, don't believe me? Look it up. Um, matter of fact, go to, uh, go to a uh, you-know-who-ish website and like the... Uh, Jewish Encyclopedia and type in Shekinah. Yeah. The goddess. Is the Holy Spirit a she? Uh, well, my Bible refers to him as a he. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. So who is this queen? She's the queen of heaven. Babylon, spiritual Babylon. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine wine and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. Slaves and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which are made rich by her shall stand afar off, for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. All these are representative of royalty people. Scarlet, purple, gold, precious stones, pearls. Oh yeah. Verse 17. For one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And everybody say, Oh, well, that's New York because you, you know, you see in the smoke of the burning, it's got to be a port city. Bible doesn't say that, but that's what they want you to think. Well, guess what? If this was a nuke, uh, you could see a nuke for, you know, like 150 miles away. 
Yeah. So, I don't know. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein we were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Well, guess what, people? You know what uh, 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 shipping container company Rome owns? Or, well, the Vatican? Zero. Do you know that there is one that uh, the Israelis own? Yeah, there is. Yeah, an Israeli shipping company is named Zim. Z-I-M. Yeah. Does Rome have a shipping company? Not that I know of. All right. And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, for that, that great city wherein we were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Why would he say that? the apostles and the prophets, that God avenged you on her. When did uh, Rome kill the apostles and the prophets? When, people? When did New York City or Mecca? When? Never. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Uh... Who was the bride of, uh, of the Bible? Israel, right? Uh, was Israel ever known by Rome or the Vatican? Who's the bridegroom? Christ. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and other bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Huh. You know what the name of that sorceries are? Kabbalah. K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. Look it up. Now we're talking about Babylon here, so let's read verse 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Uh, there's people who tell you that Rome killed the prophets. I, I challenge them. Show me anywhere in the Bible where prophets, plural, were sent to Rome to be killed. They weren't. The only prophet I know that one that ever went to Rome was Paul. And that's it. One is not plural. Prophets, plural. Jesus in Luke 13, 33 said, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. But they don't believe the words of Jesus. And they'll tell you, oh, that's Rome. Jesus in Matthew 23, 37. Jesus, not the Pope, not your pastor, Jesus. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Oh, see, this is why they don't like the uh, King James Bible. 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. God never sent his prophets to Rome, plural. He sent Paul, but Paul's not prophets. He's a, a prophet, but not prophets. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings, and ye would not behold your house is left unto you desolate. Revelation 11, 8. And their dead bodies. Now, this is talking about the two witnesses in the end times. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where also our Lord was crucified. Where was Jesus crucified? Rome? No. 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 Did you know Jerusalem's on seven hills? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, people, it's pretty, if you let the Bible tell you what the Bible says, it's really not that hard. You get in trouble when you start listening to lying pastors who uh, only care about passing that collection plate around. I, I don't have a collection plate. I, I lost my collection plate. I can't find it. So I can't pass it around. Um, and, oh, by the way, uh, those of you that have sent me a little something in the past, I appreciate it very much. Um, the Lord always provides. But, uh, you know, I don't beg. I don't beg anybody for anything. So, you know, it, it's really not that hard to figure out. In time, Jerusalem is going to be Mystery Babylon. And that's not to discount Rome. Rome is going to be a big part of it. But uh, the Antichrist is not going to rule from Rome. You got the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. You got the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. The unholy trinity of the end times. So, but the thing is, when there's not 10 righteous people in a city, you better not be there if, if you're number nine. Yeah, bad news. I think I'm going to make this a part two. So, yeah, I think I'm going to make this part two. Listen, I am on at archive.org, and I'm also on World Truth Videos. And uh, that's about all I can do, people. I mean, everywhere else is getting blocked off. It's getting to the point you can't even load anything anywhere anymore. So, um, you know, just look for Chaplain Bob Walker. You'll find me. Um, maybe I'll leave a link. So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, honor. God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, honor, in Jesus' name. Amen.